Hey there, Alina Wilson from Estimate Mastery here to talk to you about how to add O&P in your estimate. So in Xactimate, there's actually a main portion called parameters where everybody adds their 10 and 10. I have a couple of notes on that front as well as how to add O&P to just a folder or a line item. There's several reasons you'd wanna do that. And I'm gonna talk about that here in this video. So let's go take a look at how to add O&P in Xactimate. So here I am, I'm in an estimate already. I'm in the claim info main screen with the sub tab parameters. If you scroll down, you'll see 10% overhead and 10% profit here that I've added. So Xactimate has clear definitions on when ONP should be added. There's something called the overhead and profit white paper. You can Google it, you'll find it from Verisk and uh, it's super easy to find that document. The thing I wanna talk about is when it should be added. So if you have any subcontracted work where you, as the coordinator on the job, are subcontracting those trades, you are then acting as a GC. And that's what the, the white paper on ONP states. We like to operate in a, the uh, area of fact, not opinion. So I lean heavily on that document. The other thing I need you to know is that there is overhead and profit baked into the line items. So if we go over to estimate items, just take a look at some of the items that are on this list. So for this roof vent turtle type metal, there is overhead and profit baked into this line item already, but it's for the subcontractor. So as soon as you as the general contractor step in and start coordinating the job, you then are working for free according to Xactimate pricing and you need to be paid. So that's why we add the overhead and profit on top of everything here in the parameters screen. So let's take a look at a couple of things. First of all, if you wanted to go to your accountant and find out what your actual overhead is, you can change that here, right? We're not set in stone with 10% overhead, 10% profit. Uh, maybe you're working in an area where it's going to take some extra coordination and time and whatever it is. The GC needs to do extra coordination. Maybe the profit uh, percentage needs to be increased. We, I think, take it for granted that, uh, you know, we have to be charging 10 and 10. I say charge what the actual overhead and profit is. And if you're not asking for it, they can't say yes. That's my philosophy. So let's go over to the documents here and go to reports. I'm going to resequence my line items. I'm going to show you a preview here. We're going to scoot on down to the end of this report really quick and go to the summary page. So I want to be able to see that. So you'll see my overhead and my profit. They're different because I changed it from 10 and 10. So that's where it lives on the summary for dwelling. You'll also see if you're running the final draft report that the ONP is listed on the line item itself. So you can see the calculation for it there. So I'm gonna go back over to the claim info parameters. I'm gonna change this back to 10 and 10. And I'm gonna show you a couple of things here. There is something called cumulative overhead and profit that a lot of people who do commercial jobs uh, don't know that that is actually one of the standards is that, let me show you this. Cumulative, when you go to your summary page, will do this for you. It will take 10% of your overhead and add it to the profit for coordination. Isn't that interesting? So it's taking 10% of your overhead and it's going to add that to the profit. See how they're different? $3,045 versus three. Three, four, nine. So it's taking that 10% and actually turning it into 11% uh, if you want to get real technical. So that way, uh, you're again having to coordinate and uh, all the things on a commercial job. They understand that cumulatively, you need to be paid a little bit more overhead uh, uh, versus the profit, a little bit more profit versus the overhead, excuse me. So what we're going to do is go ahead and uh, wait, let me go change that back. So that's what this checkbox does. I think nobody knows what that checkbox does. So I love to talk about that. The other thing I want to show you is how you can add OMP directly to just a folder. So if I right click, let's say, let's say they'll pay OMP on everything else but the roof. I don't agree. I'm still going to subcontract out the roof. But heck, if I am at my level of profitability on this, this job, perhaps it had a lot of interior, a lot of other things. And I know that at the end of the day, my profit margin is covered and then some. I don't mind playing ball just so I can close the file, get depreciation release and go on to the next one. That's just the way it is. There's a time versus money uh, you know, issue here. So if you need to remove OMP just from one trade, all you're going to need to do is right click on that folder go to global changes, go to taxes and O&P and make this folder non-O&P. And what that's gonna do is when you look at the, let's see, 
14 of the items were affected. That's great. Let's just take a preview of that. You will see here on the line item for the roof, you've got a zero in your O&P column. So that's one way of doing it. The other way that, uh, the other thing that you can do, let me add that O&P back. There we go. That's just fine. The other thing that you can do is if there's just a couple of line items where they're like, yeah, we'll allow um, O&P on this, this, and that, but we are not going to allow it on this, this, and this, you can also do the same thing with the line item level. So if you highlight some line items, right click, go to global changes, go and non ONP them. You can do that here as well. I'm going to change that back. Now, the other thing I need you to know that you can do, and it's not a sneak tactic. Uh, that's not what I want to portray this as, but it is a way to increase all of your line items in a folder by 10%. So let's say that uh, you wanted to uh, add overhead and profit. Let's say that they're, they're non ONPing, but you don't want to maybe show so much that there's ONP added, or they're asking you to add overhead and profit to some line items and not others. That can get really, really tricky too. If you're trying to just add 5% overhead to this line item, list line item and that line item for whatever reason. So I just want to make it really versatile for you. I don't want to overcomplicate things because fancy fails, simple sells. But if they're asking you to do some crazy rigmarole, like yes, ONP, this line item, this line item, this line item, but you can only add 5% ONP, that's when this kind of would apply. So follow me on this. So right now, as it sits, there is overhead and profit uh, on these line items. You can see ONP there. So if I go to the roof, I right click, Go to that global changes and go ahead and non ONP that that area. I can then go to the line items that I want to see. Let's say these guys and let's say they'll, they'll allow 5% overhead on these. Since I have 10 and 10 right now, that's 20%, right? So 5%, let's just keep, let's just keep some, some even numbers here. Uh, we can right click go to the global changes and you can actually factor in an increase on all of these. Let's just say round numbers um, would be, let's just say they're just going to pay 5% on all of them. We can factor in 5% into the line item directly affected by, by making those changes. So the factoring is happening on line one, line five and line eight. So if we go over to our report, you will see that there isn't anything in the OMP column, but the uh, items have been factored. So line one, right? And then eight, interesting there. So see how there's no, no OMP added, but it is added to the line item directly. Let me go ahead and go back to those one, five and eight. So be careful when you do this though, because you have now changed the unit price by 5%. And watch this, if I go in there and I try to remove it, it's no longer, I can't remove the 5%. It's like it it just grabbed it and it made it law and that's what it did, it just changed it. So if you need to remove that uh, factoring, you're like, oh, I actually added it to the wrong line item or something like that, I'm gonna insert a line here. You can go ahead and just re-add the line item and that will allow you to um, you know, not have to, to worry about the, uh, the factoring being added. So the, the pricing originally was 26.52. Yes, it already includes it. That's fine. And the roof, but we, so it, it was originally priced at 26.52 with the 5% factoring, it bumped it up. So uh, just be sure that, you know, whenever you're doing anything like this, that you know the implications of it. So first of all, you can't undo it. Second of all, watch the sales tax and make sure that it's just affecting the unit price and uh, it should it should just factor the unit price. But that way you're sure that you're just adding that one piece of the 5% to the right area and then the sales tax will follow. I don't want you to missing out on the sales tax. So just make sure that it's truly 5% or 10% or 20% or whatever you're adding. And that's how you can add it per line item or per folder. You can also factor in a whole host of percentages uh, per folder that affects all the line items in that folder, okay? So that way you have some uh, flexibility on what you can and can't do. But 
I hope that is useful information to you in your career somewhere down the road that, uh, you know, factoring things in, you're not going to be able to see that it's factored on the light item list, but you can also just turn on or turn off ONP uh, per line item or per folder, just depending on what you need to do to get this paid by the adjuster. I get it. So that is how you affect ONP across the board here in Xactimate. Again, my name is Alina Wilson. Thank you for being with me here today. Hope you learned a thing or two, and I will be back next week with another Tuesday Tech Tip. So have a great week in your business, and I'll see you next Tuesday.